let's concentrate on the present and the first semi-final of this Hanoi Nine Ball Open Championship. Well, Phil, the lag shot can be a, a twitchy shot. Sanjin showed he's got the speed of this table Thank down, no right. problem at all. That's Looks like a young movie star, young Tom Cruise in the colour of money. And you never know in a winner breaks format, the lag could be very valuable indeed. A little earlier on in the tournament, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz ran six racks in succession against Ralph Suke. Maybe Perlovanovic has given himself a platform to get off to a flyer. Well, he made the one ball, Phil, but the cue ball followed it in. That will hurt when you draw off that side rail straight into the middle pocket. You feel like it's a bad break. And the thing is, because he's split the balls so well, look at that spread. He's overdone this. He's overdone it. So a little shaky one there from Shaw. That'll disappoint him. Ball in hand. Yeah, the position before was a little askew. Even then, we did not expect Shaw to miss that pot and to miss it by such a distance. He overcut that quite grossly, actually. This is not easy, though. If he can see it full ball, he'll try and bounce it off two rails up to the top rail but it's not really going to go centre of the top rail yeah this has gone wrong Shaw's got away with one here they thoroughly enjoy their pool here and the point was made yesterday they're very knowledgeable oh and so is Jason Shaw jumping to it This rack has been a little more adventurous than he wanted it to be, Carl. But it looks as though he's going to be on Shaw's side of the ledger. Yeah, nine ball is a game of ups and downs. It's like you can feel a little shaky one minute and then a couple of racks you feel like you're king of the world. Look at Coping Chun yesterday in his quarterfinals. Could have been nine, five down to the young Filipino Amaroto. Hamaroto misses the nine ball. Ko Ping Chung finished that match off like he played the final day at the US Open in the flick of a switch. And this is what can happen here. Shaw's looked a little edgy. He's made a jump shot. Looks like he's going to take rack one. He has done. And his cheering section enjoyed that. And try and get the cue ball over towards the seven. Hit this wrong. He's going to need a bit of help here, Phil. He's going to need the six ball to the rescue. Boy. In fairness, where the six is, he probably just overhit it a little bit because he was just trying to get the five past the middle. That way it didn't pop past the six. Scrappy old disjointed pool, though, in this rack. Now, what about the carom? Yeah, what it is doing is, though, it's making this an exci exciting start. Where's the five ball going to finish? Right, Shaw's in. The oohs and ahs are ringing through the arena. And we've only had one rack. The first semi-final is two guys who are desperate to get to their first open event final. Our next two, well, they've seen it all and done it all in the matchroom arenas. Yes, he's been guilty of mistakes, but it's hard to imagine now that Shaw won't double his lead.
that was more like it at the end of the rack for the crowd favourites. Jason Shaw indeed goes 2-0 up. But oh, that's a nice break. He's going to have a tough shot on the two. Even tougher because the six ball may be covering a piece of the pocket. Watch the kiss on the nine. That comes up a lot when the cue ball's going across the table. You saw there Shaw's gesticulation. He thought the six would block the two, but it most certainly isn't. Yeah, and the three ball will go. Oh, that's nice. Such a good potter. Eagle eye. Yeah, that's the real Jason Shaw. He got away with the mistake in the first rack. He got away with more than one in the second. Now, what about this six, seven? How does he go about this? Again, adopting the defensive mode, and that was heavy-handed. I wonder if Sanjin's going to be tempted to play the draw shot bank here. Got to make something happen. It looks like it can be made. Got to shoot this ball. He's sizing up for it. Okay, big moment here because this will punish the sure mistake. Is the nine ball going to come to the rescue? It looks like it is. Sort of don't mind that in the sense of I believe when a player makes a mistake, sometimes, you know, if they get away with it with a little bit of luck. Chasing the nine. It's going near the middle. It's there. Jason Joff looks the nine in the left center. Get the roofers in. It's in danger of coming off. That was a fantastic reaction. Shaw was loving every moment as soon as he saw that nine tracking towards the center. He realized he'd been very lucky. And now he's very healthily placed. What a start for him. The fluke snooker from Sanyan Pilovanovic turns out to be a rack loser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good to see. Obviously not happy, but he knew the camera was on him, so. There's far too much apologising. I'm, I'm with you. Just enjoy it. Well, listen, if you said to Jason Shaw, you're 3-0 no up, you're going to fluke the nine. Do you want to fluke the nine or not? He's going to say, of course I want to fluke the nine. I'm delighted to see it going. So why apologise? Just get on with it. Especially when you've got a big crowd like this. Embrace it. Get them involved. It's part of the sport. I'll say it again. Sanjin had the chance at the bank shot. He missed it. So, on that occasion, Rack 5 gets underway with a dry break. Again, it's all very staccato, it's all very unreliable, it's all very jittery, one has to say, for Sanyan Pilovanovic so far. Oh, missed that by a long way. He's not played great at the start of this match, let's not be silly. Sanjin will also know this, Phil. It's now a race to 11. He's four down, but... In his chair, he's got to be thinking, if I can string a few racks together here, Shaw's not playing great. I agree. In the last 32, it was on the main table. Shaw went into a 6-1 lead over Johan Chur. Then he had a mid-match crisis, and Chur got back to 6-6. That was a good shot. Spinning the cue ball round three. Backing himself on this six ball. Biggest shot of the match so far for Sanjin Perlovanovic. And that wasn't a good sign. Apart from the outcome, which obviously is damaging, he moved on that. 
the 22 year old moved coming into this match the experience of Shaw will have known if he can get off to a good start it may just rattle Sanjay, boy, he hit that pure. He got a lot out of the cue ball. You could see the spin off the rail. Pull it back up towards the seven. Shaw's on a riot here. Yeah, potted a really good three, didn't he, in the third rack as well. We're not being hypercritical. It's just the truth. He's not played his best. And yet, here he is, two balls away from 5-0. The referee is Marcel Eckhart, just cleaning the cue ball. He'll be back on snooker duty next week for the Northern Ireland Open qualifiers in Sheffield, England. And he knows how big this shot is because if he misses it, you would feel like he's going to leave his opponent in. And he's also guaranteed a shot on the six ball. Just pop the five. No, oh, he's missed it by a mile. He's missed it by a mile. What a fluke he's had here. Do you know what, Phil? It's incredible. Over the years, when I've played pool with amateur players, they seem to get more flukes because they missed the pot by so far. Because he's missed the pot by so far, he's fluked it in the left side. And you know, we've seen it so often. That could be a turning point. It really could be. It doesn't seem that way now. But in a few racks' time, we could be looking back on that. Yeah, and the thing is, if, you, if you're a good potter and you miss it and you hit the rail, you're not really going to fluke it in the... The left centre, what a incredible opening six racks we've had here. It's just been madness. If you'd have said to Jason Shaw, you're going to be five, one up from the opening six racks going into the break, he'd have snapped your hand off, Phil. That's all he's got to be thinking in his chair. In rack six, Sanyan Palavanovic kissed by Lady Luck, not once, but twice. Now then, Sanyan Palavanovic, after winning rack six, very luckily, gets to break off for the first time since he was so accurate with his lag. Where's the cue ball? Was the nine ball? <laughs> Sanyan Perlovanovic must have lived a very clean life so far. <laughs> this is extraordinary. He was a fraction of an inch away from scratching, and then the nine ball went in. That's plus the two flukes in the previous rack. I think back to back call the two luckiest racks I've ever seen consecutively it's where you can start to ask your opponent certain questions and there's no hard and fast rules Perlovanovic might push out in a different way in a different circumstance or against a, a different opponent I think that's short of pace a little bit, Phil. You can see the plant. We'll get a better view in a minute. And yeah, it's not bad, is it? You just got there. The kick's easy to hit. Might not be easy to get safe. Wonder if he's just trying to flick thin off it. No, he's tried to hit it full. 
and he's going to leave a pot. Now, I wonder if there's a 3-9 combo available here, Phil. Was something going on here? The old 3-9 combination, that was the one used by Coping Chung to defeat Max Lechner at Hill Hill yesterday. Extension, please. Needs to get past the six. Okay. He's got the opportunity to play a hook. But something tells me he's chasing the nine ball. Last time he played a combo, that two five efforts. He misjudged it. And this one is by no means a certainty either. What a shot! The crowd loving every moment, and Jason Shaw now is loving the fact he stopped a, a mini rot. Yeah, this is why you've got to stay patient because each rack is so unique in its own way. It's all the balls are in the open, so you feel like whoever gets in first should well win the rack. That's quite tight. Yeah, when you've got a situation like this, particularly cutting back into a blind pocket, the tendency can be, in order to avoid the blocking ball, to overcut. Well, he did the opposite there, but... OK. bounces he's gonna leave short in you don't always get away with it Phil this is why you have to stay focused on the job at hand feels like he can pot it he could throw a rail first yeah he played it with spin that was to turn the ball over said before whoever gets in first should win the rack all the balls are sat very kind here Cue ball a little too close to the side cushion for comfort. These have been missed. Yeah, he's one of the best in the world off the rail, though. He's one of the top players on the circuit. Who would you back him to pot this more than the others? There was no hint of any connection with a jaw in terms of potting the ball. That is just fine. Position on the five worked out, and away he goes again. have to be careful on these shots to the center pockets they are cut brutally After securing the first five racks, that is now three in succession for Jason Shaw. They're a little subdued at the moment because I think of the one-sided nature of the match. Oh, beautiful pot there from Sanjin. Maybe the best shot he's played so far in the match. 
Yeah, that's woken the crowd up a little. Not ideal, is it? Way short of pace to get on the green six. This is a thin snip, this one, Phil. Need a good set of eyes for these type of shots. The eyes don't have it there. Yeah, how much would Sanjin Perlovanovic pay if he could wake up again this morning and restart this match? This might go behind the eight ball. Well, the cue ball was making all kinds of funny little movements there. Did you know it's that, Phil? Wobbling around. No hint of a wobble, though, from Jason Shaw. OK, he's on the hill with a massive lead. Sanyan Pelovanovic now trails by eight racks with a possible nine to play. Leading by ten racks. changed the sides he was breaking from and actually this time he broke with his playing cue so he's trying things out now he's on the hill one thing he will do Phil I mean I'm talking he's going to win this match of course but it looks highly likely now especially when you look at these split of the balls he'll, he'll disappear he'll freshen up and he'll come back before the final and guaranteed he spends quite a lot of time on the break shot This not dissimilar to one of the semi-finals at the US Open when Coping Chung defeated Aloysius Yap 11-0. Yap failing to pot a ball. Ko potting all 99. This hasn't been as dominant from Shaw. But he certainly has been streets ahead of his error-strewn, error-prone opponent. Yeah, Sanjin's kind of just give too many racks to Jason. He's not took it to him. His safeties have not been tight enough. He's left too many opportunities. And of course, the aforementioned Coping Chung will feature in our second semi-final against Albin Aushin. Looks as though Alexandra Palace is going to be graced by Jason Shaw again. Wonder what the U.S. Moscone Cup captain, our colleague and friend Jeremy Jones thinks of that. We might find out in semi-final two. The story right now, though, is Jason Shaw. He's been in the wilderness to a certain degree in 2023. Now, though, he's back where he wants to be, in the spotlight. That was comfortable and it was convincing. Jason Shaw defeats Ksanian Pelovanovic by 11 racks to two. And very nearly started in golden fashion. Yeah, he's got to love the action on the rack there, a little movement on the nine. I was thinking about advantages and disadvantages between the two players 
And what we saw at the U.S. Open as far as Ko Ping Chung breaking the balls and his success rate making the one in the side was pretty unreal. Kind of felt like Alvin Ocean would be a little behind on the break. Couldn't be much, but this one's got to be a nice feeling for Alvin to get started in a very doable two ball. Catch the eight a bit. That was anticipated, though. That, that's why you saw the speed wasn't too heavy. Didn't want to knock the eight too far away. And no reason to take a risk on the seven and create a missable ball. A little stun here. Alban Ocean back in the big time, back in the semi final. Back involved in the final day of a big event. And a fine start he's made. Oh, Alvin Ocean, two time world champion, leads Coping Chung 1 0. Certainly should take it on. So I think a lot of players would have been on the fence there with that cut shot down the rail because Alvin thinks there's protection, but anytime you put a ball near the pocket, these players are usually going to find a route to get at it. Some would have taken on the jump, feeling like it was a little more secure. It's got to be a kick off the short rail here for Ko Ping Chung, and the key to this is don't baby it too much. I know there are balls near, but you don't want to lose the line. You want it to hold its line, and that's what happened. It spread on him a little Last bit. Right. And that's why speed was needed a bit more. Ball in hand. Ko, you know, we talked about it last night, that a lot of these matches start off with some open tables and, you know, some opportunity for one player, but you have to stay patient. Probably coming back to the long rail here. Speed is all he's needed. And here on the TV table again, pocket's not easy, but they're playing a little easier than the table they played the tables they played on all week. And when Alvin gets comfortable with the pocket, he just really starts to play the cue ball and forgets about the pocketing of the ball. It's good to be back for Alban Ocean. It's been a disappointing year for him, but thrilled to be here on the final day and so pleased with how he started this match. Alban Ocean dominating the first two racks against Coping Chung. A little bit missable ball on the side. He's going to play it there because he can go up the side rail with the cue ball and handle the pink four from distance if needed. See the crowds here in Vietnam, incredible. Not just here on final Sunday, but they've been like that all week. What a wonderful thing to see for anyone who wants to see the game continue to grow, to show that we can come to a new country like this, and play in a big indoor arena, and have all those people watching. And very encouraging when you consider all the talk about various other countries that Matchroom are looking to stage big events in for the first time over the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you talk about pool, you know, a lot is in place. I mean, there's a huge fan base worldwide. I think it can grow immensely bigger. The amateur side of the game is incredible. The professional side's been there for a while, but nothing like the World Nine Ball Tour is doing and really growing the game worldwide. Alban Ocean, as I was mentioning, world champion for the first time in 2016, then won it again, coming from 9-7 down. 
I mean, six racks in a row to beat Omar El Shaheen, 2021. And that was at a time when he was having just such a wonderful run throughout that year. And Alvin just knows the slick table so well. Like there, he knew if he got into the ball, there was a threat of that upper left corner, so he knew to just float into position. You know, and the eight and nine's very handy. When Ocean was having all that success a couple of years ago, scenes like this were very familiar. Ball after ball, rack after rack. Dominating against opponents of all levels. Right here, he's playing one of the four men of world nine ball at the moment, and he's totally in control. Boy, decisions, decisions here, and this, mm. it, I wouldn't say he's ideal on the combination, but it got good enough to where it's a very big consideration moving forward and keeping coping chung in his chair especially because the safety is a little awkward so i gotta believe he's going to play the combo and this is where he can cheat the pocket a little bit but it'll be a light speed so he doesn't lose the seven he's just not putting a foot wrong so far in this match oh, well you said it earlier that big comeback against svb had to had to be a good one to go to bed on that night and sleep easy and, and get a lot of confidence moving forward in this event. Hey, does he move the ball a lot here? I think he can. Maybe he plays short side for the nine and the middle on the bottom of your screen. Not ideal, but way he's playing and the way he's potting so far he could back him all day long yeah we all love tickets on the 50 yard line but it's not the best thing in nine ball pool I'll tell you these sides that are probably playing more difficult than the corners Got a little snatchy with it there, Michael. Stroke was a little quick. Again, you can sense how involved the crowd are already in this match. And the big moments come, they draw a big reaction. And you can sense how big this shot is for Koping Chong and his movement towards the final. Just to get off, off of zero here. He just hasn't had it yet. It's going to get a little fortunate not to leave a cupcake on the nine for Albin, but and very similar to that shot he missed earlier on the two ball down the rail. Hit it quite thick. A lot of times that's a little nerves, and you kind of quit the stroke at impact a little instead of just accelerating on through. Now does he go for the bank, knowing his opponent struggling a bit to get started? Or does he lay the nine on the top on the bottom rail as the cue ball goes upstairs? Hanoi is famous for its mopeds and scooters that speed around the city. And right here, it's all one-way traffic. Alvin Ocean leads 6-0. Yeah, so many players have had their big moments. It's been such a spread of success on the tour this year and its very biggest events. He needed that. Now look at the cue ball is going to dress up right on the two. I think he does have a pocket, but does the three play? And that was definitely by design. I think the three may go by the purple five. We'll see. Q 
Huge rack here, the sixth. And I'll tell you, another, just to get on the board for one thing, but to go to the commercial break, right? Trailing 6-0, not having much opportunity. That could become very mental. Hanging on every single ball they're seeing. Well, what's going on with Ko Ping Chung? This is not even a shadow of the player we saw in Atlantic City a couple of weeks ago. No question he's feeling it out there big time. I'll tell you, Alvin, open Ocean has applied a lot of heat and the little opportunities that Ko Ping Chung has had besides that one there have been difficult. And of course, Ocean, with all his experiences, recognizing surely the signs he's getting from Ko Ping Chung. He knows this is there for the taking and the way his opponent's feeling at the moment. Have to build an almost unassailable lead here. Yeah, is he going to go offensive or just put him behind the green six? Pretty easy safety behind the green. Oh, he could go offensive. Okay, he's going to have to make a bit of a tester here on the five. He's going to have to command the speed. The six is playable, but you can't just go anywhere with the cue ball. Now, does he have to put a little side on this to avoid the scratch where the cue ball's at now? I think a straight high ball is okay. Cut it. He's overcut it. And any of those shots, you can use the long rail a little bit. And you can see the fans want this match to turn around and get a little closer. And this is just the sort of chance Ko Ping Chung needs. Needs to get a few balls under his belt. Clearly, he needs to win a rack. Already made uh, another combination on the other side of the table from similar sort of range a few racks ago. this one as well hmm. but not finished ideal by any means no, I think he expected some kind of contact on the brown seven going forward with the cue ball narrowly missed it we'll see the cue ball and the brown seven together a couple times there as they passed each other now decisions it's the type of bank shot the players really like to take on Might do it twice. Could be twice. Okay, so the big roar of anticipation goes up. But this is far from certain here. And how many times do we say it when you're playing it from distance and the ball is near the pocket? There's only so much control you can have over what the cue ball is going to do. And he struggled with the longer shot so far in this match. Not with this one, though. Oh, but Ocean could have won all seven of these racks. He did win the first five. But two in a row now for Ko Ping Chung. He's getting right back into this one. It's 5-2. Feel a little shift in momentum if he can fight through this very difficult rack. It was heading in the right direction, but it never really looked like it quite had the pace to get there. Yeah, well, he wasn't trying to make it. You saw him stitch the cue ball behind Sure, the yeah, he didn't six. want it in, yeah. yeah. But the problem is now these players know how to get it every pocket, whether it be a kick shot or a jump shot. The jump, not an option, but you got to believe as far as making the purple five, Alvin Ocean, a little favorite here. Little draw stroke to bend the ball. It's 
and such a hard fought rack. Yeah, not faulting Koping Chung, but he got down and played the safety pretty quickly. He and did. The five, yeah. the five did play in the middle. I mean, it was it wasn't an easy shot, but one I th thought he was going to take on. Yeah, I was surprised by that as well, and it nearly all went against him with the five dropping in. He would have had to figure out what to do with the six. Now, what a chance for Ocean to reassert himself. And it's still going to take some work. Didn't look confident playing that. Yeah, I was a little shocked at the speed he shot it. And I really like uh, a little more conviction on those shots. Not saying you're going to fire it, really. That's never going to be the case. But nine. This isn't the most friendly shot to hit with speed with a high ball. But he feels like he'll go into the three seven maybe, like that. Trying to gamble for position. A little unlucky. And that's the big part of nine ball pool. We see them once these players get in position, they keep position, but at times you have to take chances. And you can't blame that one there. It just hasn't worked out yet. Tell you what, hard not to kick at this long rail, just so makeable for these players off that top cushion. What he's looking at, and this is hard because if You'd like to, in a perfect world, play it with a two rail speed to clip the three and come up on the nine with the cue ball. But if you get underneath it, you may not get a cushion. So I think he's going to put some speed in this. Oh, he's missed it completely. Well, especially the best in the world and, of course, winning matches. Now, can he bank the two kind of by the seven and kind of casually go behind the three as the two comes down table? He can go off the right side and run the ball, but I think he's going to try and use the seven. Okay, he's going to chip off the side. Watch out for the glance off the pink four. What will be a very good pass, even though a good effort from Alvin Ocean. Koping Chung wins the battle of the push out here in game number 11. And the hum of anticipation that's becoming so familiar here in Hanoi echoes around the arena once again. Well, I'll tell you, you know, the camera shows us there's a little angle. But on the slick table, if you get involved with really trying to power this ball, I think you're taking a big chance at missing. That's the problem. He doesn't have a ton of options, but I like the draw stroke here. Oh, sweet, sweet one there. like to bottle that one, Michael. Now is he sizing up for a 5-9 combination to cut this lead back to one? Still got the red three and the pink four, but you can see that on the bottom cushion. Yeah, that should do nicely. Just going to go forward with the cue ball. It doesn't have to get all the way down kind of to the bottom rail to play the combination, but he's got to get past the eight. He was thinking exactly the same way as you, Jeremy. Five mil down, but back to one behind at 5-4. And once again, he trails by just a single rack. It's now Koping Chung, five, Alvin Ocean, six. Very lightly. Uh, he's overcut it a mile.
How's the speed, Michael? That's got to slow down. Yeah. That's got to slow down a bit. I didn't see the speed on the shot coming. Kind of surprised me a bit. So another rack that he's having to fight for all the way to the finish. It's going to go his way now. He's led all the way through this match. And now he's only four away from winning it. Alvin Ocean, a couple clear once again against Coping. Eight five. Oh, he got real quick there. Real quick on the takeaway. And a 2-9 to get back on the board, possibly, for Ko Ping Chung. Yeah, got a little snatchy with it there and miss hit the one. And you can always tell because the one didn't even threaten that side pocket. And there he is again. Suddenly it's the hand over the face again, just as we were saying that hadn't been going on. So we've seen a couple of relatively lengthy racks this semi-final this could be the shortest yeah the key to this is hit it right in the middle don't baby it don't crush it yeah, just a nice solid speed scratch off the break from ocean two nine combination from coping chung two shots to decide rack 14 now he's got to regroup we're saying there we the analyze throughout all these tournaments all the different aspects of the game but how often do we come away at the end of it saying that the reason the guy won the tournament was because he broke better than everyone else when it came to the big matches it's yeah. a bit like in a big golf tournament where so often we say it comes down to who has the best week with the putter this is super thin may get action on the nine Oh, and that's the action he didn't want. But wait a, wait a second. Oh, my. Well, the five did nudge the nine out of the way. But then landed right <laughs> where he didn't want it to. Yeah, and a bit of a wry smile there. The difference in pool and golf is you don't have three, four, five minutes to walk it off. you got to get on with it. You see and you can hear the crowd feel his pain. Is that quite often? So once again, he's going to put a bit of distance between them. Another intriguing rack. And it's another one that has gone the way of the two-time world champion from Klagenfurt in Austria. Alvin Ocean now leads 9-6. Looks like that's the second one is the selection for Alvin. He's trying to kill the cue ball. I gave up a little bit of a look. Now this ball rests near the rail, which makes the cross side bank very difficult, if maybe not even playable. here in such big and increasing numbers throughout the week. And they've seen all sorts of things. Add that to the list. This is what a crowd being involved is like, isn't it? People love to talk about it nowadays. Let's get the crowd involved. And that usually just means let's get them shouting and creating a bit of a commotion. This is a crowd really hanging on every single thing that's happening. And they're yeah. getting a little more drama. Yeah, absolutely. That was not the intended position on the eight. Should still be okay, but... Well, these are fans that have put forth an effort the entire week in so many ways to be great fans while the matches are going on, away from the matches. 
I'm sure a few of them were in the tournament itself. Well, the other night after one of Ko Ping Chung's matches, security had to be called to come outside the venue. There were so many people queuing up to meet him for photographs and signings and all the rest of us. No, but Ocean might have been starting to feel he was establishing a bit of security in this match. Oh, he caught the six with the cue ball. If he gets safe here, it was by luck. Just lost the plot there for a shot. Yeah, not the first time we've seen him do that. It's a tendency he Oh, he, has, he may have broke his cue yeah, right there. I heard something kind of yeah. crack. Yeah, no, absolutely. It certainly felt that way, didn't it? Yeah, cue cracking and maybe a few other things unraveling for Alvin Ocean. And hate to see it. He's played a beautiful set. He's still got to finish. Bet he doesn't feel so bad about it now. Well, it kind of felt like uh, maybe the pool gods will look at that temper a little bit. But we've talked about the sides, you know, the corners being a hair easier, but the here. Yeah, these fans are invested, that's for sure. Robin Ocean has invested so much effort and energy into this match. He always does. Lost his cool a little during that rack. Looked as though he may have lost his cue, but it seems to have survived intact. And he's now on the hill at 10-7. Coping Chung is playing under that pressure of, as we always say, knowing his next mistake would be very possibly his last. Oh, yeah, now kind of bouncing around the table like he's got a five or six game lead. Ready to end it and get something to eat. Well, meanwhile, it's a semifinal with, uh, I don't know, what feels like 2,500 deep in this arena, 2,000 deep. I mean, it's just a huge crowd. Every time I look Does up, it, gets it, bigger? Seems, it seems like more people have come in every time I look. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what they do on Sundays normally, but this Sunday evening, Probably play pool. Well, they're watching the best in the world, that's for sure. And that's what I mean. He's starting to really thump the pocket. And as you're watching, you might think that this Asian Vietnamese crowd wants Ko Ping Chung to win. And sure vast many of them do but they want hill hill that's what they want and every chance now they're going to get it because Ko Ping Chung will be breaking with an opportunity to deliver that a fine rack it's his second in a row he's one behind now at 10-9 I wouldn't say guaranteed the hit but 95 percent for sure oh my oh my and that's quite a miss there because I felt like he wanted to come underneath it. If he comes across it, he's going into the nine with the cue ball and really no safety there. So a very rare uh, misjudgment from two-time world champion Alvin Ocean. And we're on the cusp of a Hill Hill match. Yeah, more likely than not. That vast crowd that we're seeing here. Going to see the final rack drama all been hoping for so different to the first semi-final it was just a landslide for Jason Shaw be very surprising if Samuel Pelovanovic doesn't come back and have much better days than that towards the end of big events but Shaw has been waiting for a couple of hours now to find out who his opponent is going to be okay three definitely does play it looks like it'll be a draw stroke one rail above to the center of the table. The five near, six, seven playable. This is really the shot, obviously not to end the rack. 
but to put us in position for that hill hill we're all wanting. And you got to love it. So much pressure, but these players, they don't cinch the ball, right? Go ahead and let the swing go and see what happens. So Alvin Ocean was first to the hill at 10 7. But now he's been joined there. We're going to get our final rack. And Coping Chung will have the break in it. And really, this has all happened so quickly that he's won these three racks in a row. Cue ball's going to be clean. The two's going to be long, but playable. Well, he potted a really big two ball, didn't he, a few racks ago to really spark this comeback into life. He needs to come with another massive one now. Yeah, it's going to be a little awkward cueing. The good thing he's so smart, I think he simplifies the shot here on the two, even though it's not easy no matter how you play it. I think he just kind of tries to hold his ball there for a cut on the three. And no one's sweating it more than that man right there. Desperate for a chance to do something, anything about it. Well, this type of shot is why you practice. This is why you train all those hours. It's not really about aiming. It's just like go with your gut, swing the cue. And Ocean is going to get that chance. This is why this tournament is different, because they don't play in arenas this vast, with this many people watching. It poses a whole different set of questions, and Coping Chung wasn't able to come up with the answer there. Now all the pressure shifts to Ocean, as he looks to finally get this done. And I don't think he was so unhappy the way he struck the ball. It was a difficult shot. All right, wanting to carry an angle on the red three and not catch the seven. So the first part of this puzzle is behind him. Yeah. And You'd like to just come one rail straight down the table, go at the six, just a little speed control. Now, how you hit the pocket means a lot as far as the cue ball is concerned. Okay, the speed's going to be just fine. Cue ball getting a little straight on the pink four. Did rest near the rail a little bit. I don't know if the five goes by the six. Still lots going on in this rack. Thing about Coping Chung shot, the only thing that I don't even question, but I thought would be there, is I thought the extension was all for that shot. I thought he would really maybe take his extension there. Oh, is he playing for a 5 9 to end this? Wow. wow. Well, imagine the reaction we're going to get from this crowd who have had the time of their lives here today, if this is how it all finishes. Oh, Alvin Ocean like right there. was 5-0 in front. Later, he led 10-7. It was all slipping away from him, potentially. When it got back to 10 all. And now, after Ko Ping Chung's miss on the two, Ocean has this combination for the match. Two weeks ago and 8,000 miles from here, Ko Ping Chung was US Open champion on the water's edge of the Atlantic Ocean. In Hanoi, he's come undone at the hands of Alvin Ocean. A wonderful, wonderful semi-final in a wonderful setting.